Hi, I'm Andrew Phillips. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be installing this vinyl fence here on my property, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's go ahead and get started. One of the things that I want to do before we get started, I want to identify the different pieces of vinyl fence that you'll need. That way, if you're ordering it or wherever you're purchasing it, you're purchasing the correct components. But before we get started, before you can even get to this point, if you live in a subdivision like I do, you're going to need to get approval from the HOA, the Homeowners Association, basically letting them know where you're going to put your fence, what type of a fence, because there's different bylaws and rules that they probably have as far as what you can and can't have. The HOA for the community that I live in, it has to be vinyl fencing. I've done wood fencing before at other homes that I've lived in. This one here, it always has to be vinyl, which I like that better because you don't have to upkeep it and maintain it. If people let it get dilapidated, it's not being an eyesore for the community. But you want to check with your HOA first, see what's allowed. They'll also let you know, you know how far you can come on your property, things like that. So before you even get started, you're going to need to get a copy of your site plan for your property. And when you purchased your home, you should have received that with your closing documents. And that'll show you your property line and just all the different scaled dimensions of your property. You'll need to get a copy of that and then mark it up. Once you have all of that marked up on there, then you can submit that to your HOA board and then they can then either approve it, deny it with any recommendations, things like that. Once you have the approval from the homeowners association, the next thing you'll need to do is get a permit. Now, where I live, we need to submit it here to the county. If you live in a city, you have to give to them a pretty much any jurisdiction, the municipality, you have to submit for a permit in order to get that approved. So you'll use that same site plan that you used for your HOA give that to them. Sometimes they'll need proof that the HOA has already approved it first. Sometimes they don't. Some places they don't require permits. So you, you'll just have to check with the county or city, wherever you live or borough and see what's required, but that'll be the next step. So once you get your HOA approval from your homeowners association, next you'll need to get your permit. Same thing, you'll have to call out the details as far as the height of the fence. Sometimes you have to include a, a, a picture so they can see what type of fence you're putting in. You'll have to show the actual markings, where on the property line it is, the setbacks, things like that. Once you've gotten those two approvals, then you're ready to get started. And that's where we're going to be right here is ordering the materials. So I'm going to pull different pieces out so I can explain to you what they're called so you'll know what to order. I pulled the different types of posts out so we can explain what they're called and what they're used for so that way you're ordering the right post. So we have four different ones here. First one that we have, this one is known as a corner post. You would use this if you're doing the corner of your property. So you have one line of fence coming in, making the, the, the corner, and then going this way. So the way that it's cut, you have an input on this side, and then right on this side is the other one. So you have fencing coming in this way, the rails, and then going out this way to make that corner. So this is a corner post. So when you're measuring out and marking out your property, whatever corners you're sealing in, that's how many you're going to need. The next one is probably the most common one. This is what's known as a line post. The line post, as you can see, goes straight through. So you would use this as you're doing your line of fencing. The fence I'm, I'm putting up is five feet high by eight feet. So center to center at eight feet will be a different line post each time. So basically the rails come in here and then they continue out on this side. So this is what's known as a line post. It, 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 it has it in line, the cuts. The next one is what's known as an end post. So if you're putting up your fence and maybe you're meeting up against your house or if you're sharing uh, part of fencing with a neighbor and you're meeting their side, you would use what's called an end post. The end post has only the routed out sections on one side. All other sides are sealed because pretty much it's the end, as it says, end post, the end. So it only comes in and then that's it and it has a nice finished look on the other side. And then the last one, this one is, for, uh, is used for putting up a gate, and it's a regular post, whether it be a line post, an end post, corner post, whatever you're using, but it has what's known as a stiffener inside of it. So you have your input here, but if I slide this out, you'll see this aluminum stiffener. That goes inside of it, and that's pretty much the side of the gate that is going to have the hinge attached to it, so that way it's reinforced with that that stiffener inside of it and then when we get to putting up the gate I'll show you but that's also where you're gonna drill through to connect the hinge to is it, you're gonna you're gonna want to grab into that aluminum so that way you're not just on the vinyl itself where you could damage it so these are the different posts that are needed now let's look at the other components of the fence and we'll go over what they're called so that way you know what the order as well 
these are the components that will now be inside of the, the rails or sections. First one here, this is what's known as a gate socket post. This is the post used for the gate. So there are smaller ones here. I believe they are four by fours. You'll, you'll get two of those when you order it. It's a whole assembly. But this is what you'll need to build the gate, and then it'll mount to that post that we just looked at with the stiffener is where the hinge will mount to. So you have that. And then you have this part here, which is your rail. This is You have either your, your top or your bottom rail, which is this piece here. This one here is shorter because it's made for the gate. It's a little bit smaller. We have a bigger one here on the end. Those are eight feet long for the main fence. But those are your rails. They're the exact same thing on the top and bottom. And they basically support this part here, which is known as the picket, that slides into the groove. And when we assemble the fence, we'll look at it. But these are the pickets. And then on the ends of the pickets, you have these, these U-channels that kind of cap them off like that. So they normally come in a, uh, in a pair. So you get two of those, one for each side. But that's your rail, whether it be top or bottom. These are your pickets with the U-channel ends. And then you have the top and bottom gate rails. And then this is your, your, um, your gate socket post. So these are the other components along with the post that we looked at. Now you know what to order. So at this point, you should have received your approval from your homeowner association, your permit. You should have marked out your property, ordered the materials you need. Let's head off to the next step before we start digging. Before you do any digging on your property, always make sure to call Miss Utility, have the lines marked. As we can see here, there's lines here, lines here, going out this way. You want to make sure that you're not hitting any gas lines, electric lines, water lines, telecommunication lines, any of that. So it's very important to call that in and get everything marked before you start. Next thing you're going to want to do is you want to find your property markers. Um, sometimes they'll leave a stake in the ground if it's a new home build. If not, there might be a metal, um, a metal pole in the ground that you'll need to locate. But if you have your site plan for your property, it should be easy to find it. But once you've got it marked, you want to take a line and you want to line out your property from end to corner to end, wherever you're doing your fence. That way you have a clear line of where the property is. Because as you put your fence in, you want to be on the inside. You don't want to be on it to where you're splitting the property with the neighbor, you definitely don't want to be on their side, but you want to be within your side. So once you have that marked out, now you know where your fence is going to go. Now, if you have one side of your property, as I have here, where a, a neighbor has an existing fence, it's always good if you can get permission to share that fence with them. That'll save you the time and hassle of putting another fence right up against it. And then you have the problem of weeds and junk coming up in between, things like that. So if you can work it out with your neighbor, that's best case scenario. So what I would recommend if you're going to do that, obviously get their permission, come up with an agreed upon amount to split the cost of that. That way you own that side, they own the other side, they'll upkeep it, you upkeep yours, things like that. And then it's not a bad idea to get one of these fence sharing agreements drafted up. You can um, either do it yourself or have an attorney do it, but that'll pretty much document that you both agree to share it, the amount was agreed upon, the amount was paid. That's more so in the case if your neighbor should move and another person buys the home, they're not trying to get you to pay for it. You can prove that, it, that you already own that half. So that's, it, it always pays to do it right, get all the bases covered. But in the case here, I'm going to be sharing with my neighbor. So we're just going to be butting up to his fence. That makes it a lot easier. Now that the property lines have been marked, we've had all of the utility and power lines, all that things marked as well. We're ready to start digging. These are the items that I'm going to be using in this video. First of all, you're going to need your concrete. So you're going to want to calculate that properly based on what kind of concrete you're using. I'm going to be using this fast setting concrete mix by Sacrete just because you can keep moving. It's quick. If you want to see a video I did on how to properly use it, because we're not going to get into all the details in this video, you can check it out via the link above, also down in the description. But highly recommend this one because it, it sets fast so you can keep moving. Next, you're going to need a bucket, regardless of what you're doing, whether you're mixing your concrete, whether you're using this, whatever, you're going to need that. We do have a measuring tape right down here. Hopefully you can see it, but measuring tape because you are going to need to be measuring your center to center off the poles and making sure everything is accurate. We do have here a, um, um, a hole, hole digging um, rod and tamper right here that you'll need that. That comes in handy if you're trying to dig into the holes, if you're going through clay, rock and different things like that. We also have a, a hole digger. I'm not using an auger. I'm just using a regular hole digger because I've got a lot of lines on this property with my irrigation system and different things. I don't want to be going in with an auger and hitting different things. So that's what we're using. And then you will need a shovel to move things around and obviously a wheelbarrow. So now that we have all this identified, let's start digging our first hole and getting this fence done.
just marked where our corner post is going to go because my fence is not going to come past this side of my house. I'm only running it up to this point and then down and over. So I marked the corner you can see here where the end post is going to be, where it butts up against the house. Then the fence will come down here with the gate here. We'll hit the corner post and then head down that way to where we'll butt up against the neighbor's fence. So what I'm going to do is start by putting in my corner post here because going this way, it may not necessarily be a complete eight foot section. So if you start that way, you're gonna wind up with a short piece here in the front and you always want your short pieces towards the back corner and have your complete eight foot sections in the front and more visible spots. So I'm gonna start by putting in this corner and then we'll be able to run up this way with the gate and then that, that way to meet the neighbor's fence. So I'm gonna get the whole digging stuff and we'll start putting this one in. As we dig this hole, we're gonna have our hole digger, as mentioned already, on the inside of this property line right here. And we're gonna make that hole about 12 to 18 inches in diameter. So that way when the pole is set, it'll be a few inches within our property line and not on the line or over the line. So I'm gonna pull this stake out and then we're gonna start digging this out. And you also want the diameter no less than 12 inches. I think here we got about maybe 16 inches, but usually 12 to 18 is what you want. Okay, as we get near the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to measure it properly. These holes need to be three feet deep, maybe less in the area where you live in, I don't know, but normally all the areas I've always lived in has been three feet, but you may wanna double check that. So let's put this in. Right on point, I'll get a close up. Now that that's in, we can get our corner post, get it in line here, get everything situated. We'll get that concreted in since we are using the fast setting concrete mix. It starts hardening in a couple minutes, but in 30 minutes it's set. So while that's setting properly, we'll go ahead and mark our eight feet out, start digging the next one. Because once that's in, we can put the other one in. You don't want to cement these all in at once with the vinyl fence because you need the one end to be flexible so you can move, you know, maneuver it, pull it out so you can get all the rails and, um, and uh, pickets in. So while this is setting, we'll dig the next one. Then this one will be properly set. We can attach everything, adjust that one, concrete that one in and keep moving in that pattern. Let me get the post so we can get it in. Now this corner post, you can see we have an input here, input here. Since we're going to have the line coming this way and then going up to the house, we're going to turn it this way. So the bottom rail will be here, top rail will be up there once it's in the ground, and then bottom rail going towards the, the gate in the house. So if we drop this in, and you'll notice you want the bottom of this routed piece right on ground level so your bottom rail doesn't have a gap underneath. You want it nice and snug. So this is our bottom rail, then you'll have your pickets in here, top rail, and then we have the post cap that goes on top. So I'm gonna get this measured up in line, get everything situated, and then we'll go ahead and get it set. I'm not gonna go through the whole process of concreting it and all that, because as mentioned already, if you watch my video on how to use the Sacrete fast setting concrete mix, I go more in depth on that part as far as the footer goes. For this video, we're just gonna be moving along building the fence. So I'm gonna get this in and then we'll be back.
with the post in place, I put a couple inches of dirt in there to hold it steady while we level it. With that layer of dirt there, we'll tack it down real good. Get a nice solid base to hold this thing steady. So it doesn't move around when we install onto it. And then uh, we'll be back to check the, the level on it and then start adding the concrete mixture. We'll put a level on it. And you can see right down here, perfectly level. And what I did is I got it nice and situated and I packed a little bit of dirt along the bottom of the post and tamped it down to hold it in place. Let's check the other side. Put it on here as well. And you can see right there on this bottom one right here, perfectly level as well. So we're ready to uh, add the concrete, let this thing set, and we'll move on to the next hole, and then we'll build this whole panel. Also, after you level it, make sure that you are still within your line. You can see we're about, maybe about a quarter to a half an inch inside the property line, to the, and then we have the center of the pole here. See it out there? What you don't want is to be over that, because that's obviously not your property. So now that that's set, it's level, we're gonna add the concrete to this. Got it inside that opening since we did put water in there as well. I love this fast setting concrete because it's a no mix. You just add water in the hole, add a couple bags of this stuff to it. It sets in a matter of minutes, half an hour complete. And you can move on instead of waiting 24 hours like with regular concrete. Now with the concrete in place, we're going to go ahead and check the levels again on this post on both sides. Make sure it's nice and straight, especially with this fast setting concrete. This thing will start to harden in a couple minutes and it's uh, fully set in 30 minutes. So got to move quick. If you're using regular concrete, you have 24 hours, but you still don't want this thing to shift. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to mark eight feet center to center. Now, when I say center to center, we're going to be putting the measuring tape inside this five by five. So about two and a half inches inside of it, marking where the center of the next post would be. That's your eight foot center to center. So let's get this in here. Bring it up. Make sure it's in the center as shown here. And then I'll take my stake here, line it right up with the eight foot mark, put it in. That's where we're gonna start our hole like we did on the first one. And then we'll go with our 12 to 18 inch diameter. And then that post will be right in the center here, lining right up with that eight foot center to center. So I'm gonna dig this out and then we'll be back. We are at three feet. Let's put this in. Okay. I'm going to get the bottom rail. That one is almost completely set now, so we know it's not going to move. We're going to connect the bottom rail, and then we're going to build this whole section, and then we'll level this out and get this in place after it's connected. That way we make sure everything lines up properly, because once you get that too packed in and try to move it, it's hard to maneuver. So while it's still loose, we can build that section, and then we'll level it, position it, concrete that in, and then move on. We're going to start by bringing the lower rail first, and we will... Insert it into the concreted post since that's the stable one. The other post is still flexible so we can maneuver that after we put the pickets in place. Get this thing lined up and sometimes you got to work it in. It has little clips that I'm going to show you in a minute that need to go in and lock into the routed piece. And then we'll work this here on this side and get this one in place as well. These little wings or clips what they'll do is as you push it in, 
they will go through the routed piece and then lock on this side and hold it from coming out. When connecting the pickets, you want to make sure that you use these male and female ends, the grooves, so they go together and interlock and don't put the two positives or negatives together. And sometimes you may just want to take your hand like that, open it up a little bit, and that will slide it back into this post, get it to lock. There we go. Slide it in. Now that locks, and now we can just drop this down over it all. There we go, and now we're going to bring this one back in to make this connection. Make sure it's coming through. Good, good, good. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Everything is locked in place. You don't want any gaps. You want it nice and flush. It's looking good. Next, what I'm going to do is get this nice and leveled in. We'll get and concrete this one in and move on. All the concrete has been poured in here. We're going to let that set. So I'm going to move on, do the next hole, keep going. I'm not going to show all that. So what I'm going to do is finish doing the rest of the fence. Since we showed how to do one, it's the same thing, just repeat it over and over again. And then we'll be back to see how it's looking and then wrap up by doing the, the gate with the gate post and the stiffener and all that stuff. And then that'll wrap up this whole video for uh, installing a vinyl fence. If you have a situation like I have here with this end picket, it's got a little bit of a gap too wide next to that end post. What I do is I'll take some of these uh, adhesive foam pads and put them inside of the decorative U-channel, the end part. And those spacers will give you enough, enough space. They're about maybe about an inch, uh, about an eighth of an inch thick. But look at that. It gives enough in there to fill that gap and push it against the post. That way you don't have that opening. And then now for doing the, the finial caps or the post caps, I just use some silicone adhesive. Put a glob in two of the corners. Uh, and this one here, I'll just put it in the caddy corner across from each other. Put one there. We'll go ahead and put one on this end. And then we can take these and just press them down over the post, get that silicone adhesive to catch. All of the fencing has been put up and you can see what I did here because this line, this is the, the property line for my neighbor. His fence is about 18 inches too far over. So what I did is I got permission from him to, to branch over here. So we have this little wall coming here and then it rides the line going that way. Also did the rest of the fencing also so we can get ready to focus on this last piece with the, the two posts that support the gate with the stiffener in it and then wrap this up. But let me show you here the rest of the fence that was done. This is obviously my neighbor's fence back here. So mine met here in the corner. Couldn't get it to match up exact because of the concrete footer around his post and then the 
this other neighbor's post. So we have a gap that I'll fill later. I'm not going to cover it in this video, but we'll put a little piece in there. And then let me show you what I did here. We had this corner where we have the neighbor's fence meeting here. I had another neighbor back there and I couldn't go any further because of the concrete and the ground. Otherwise I would have taken my post to meet that. So instead of having that gap, I just had some scrap left over for the upper and lower rail and a couple pickets and then just made that piece. It's a nice tight fit in there. So um, it, it, it's really secure in there. And then I took some silicone and then also caulked. You can see what I did up there. Just just caulked around it to seal it nice. So at least it's, it's got a finished look and not that gap. Also, if you have dogs or animals and things, you don't want them to be able to slip out. But all this has been done. So we've got everything set and in place. And then now with these, you're going to have to, well, sometimes there's different options. If you're buying it from a wholesaler, the fence like I did, they'll give you the option to have the gate pre-assembled or you can do it yourself. I personally like doing it myself because then you can adjust the size if you need to make it work. Right now we're setting the post with the stiffener in it. Let's head over there and then we'll be back on this side to assemble the gate and then connect everything up. So this here is our corner post that's going to be going against the house. That's also where we're going to have the, the hinge of the gate connected to. So you, that's where you'll need to put in a stiffener. So we'll slide this aluminum stiffener in place. And when we set this in, I'm going to put about a couple inches of concrete down in the bottom. It's always good to concrete this stiffener inside the post. So you can either pour concrete down into it from the top or I'll just put... I don't know, maybe four or five inches of concrete, lower this in there to get it all locked in there, and then we'll start packing it in and, and putting all that together. Then once that properly dries, then we can then put our other post, which is going to land somewhere around here, and that'll be where the latch is. So the gate's going to open this way because we are having a pool put in my yard, so the gate has to open away, and there's certain requirements that the inspector needs that I'm not going to get into in this video because it may vary based on where you live. But let's get this in place, and then uh, we'll start building the gate. Since I'm using this fast setting concrete, we put a little bit of water in there first. Pour this in. And now we'll set the post in place. I'll lower this in. All right, we have this in position. I'm going to get the level, we'll level it out, and then I'm going to finish. Uh, tamping it in and then filling the rest with concrete. I'm not going to cover all that because we've already looked at that in the other video. So I'm going to get this done and then I'll, I'll meet you on the other side and we'll start putting the gate together. So we have all of the parts to the gate out here that we're going to be using. We have our two gate posts. You can see that they're already fitted right here for the top and bottom rails. Then we have all of our pickets that slide in. We have our view channels that go on the sides pretty much is built just like a section of the fence that we did earlier, except you have the, these different um, end posts, and then we do have the caps, the finial caps that go on top. Now, once we put the top and bottom rails into these grooves, we have screws that are gonna go in top and bottom to lock them in. I also put a little bit of some silicone adhesive in there as well, just to hold it. You can also buy some, I think, uh, some, some PVC cement, things like that, just for extra support. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this together and then uh, we'll take a look and see how, how it turned out. And then uh, we'll get the hardware out for the latch, for the hinges, and then we'll head back over. Because uh, in the meantime, that, that fast setting concrete is hardening around that, that uh, post with the stiffener where the hinge is going to be mounted to. So while that's drying, we're going to build this. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do a, a quick time lapse of me putting this together. And then we'll take a look and see how it turned out. One other thing I wanted to mention, with these gate posts, you'll notice here that this fitted piece on the bottom goes right to the bottom. The top one gives you a little bit of a gap. This is going to be the top because when you put the cap on it, you need that space for it to slide over. If you do it here on this side, it's going to hit all of the, uh, the little riveted pieces in there and it won't be able to fit. So that's your bottom one. The top one has the space on it.
everything has been assembled. Let's raise it up. So the next thing that I need to do is we'll put the screws in, top and bottom to hold it in. And then we'll be able to put the caps on. I like to stagger them, so we'll put heat one here, one a little bit offset, and then another one down here. There we go. That one is in. I'm going to go ahead and do the other three ends, get them locked in, and then we'll be back to slide the caps on. Here's all the hardware that comes with the gate. We have our gate latch, which consists of the latch, the handle, the lock, the key, all that. And then we have this right here, which is the true close um, hinge. So we're going to open this up, see what's inside of it. We have our hinges. And here's the bag with the hardware to install it. Then you also have your instruction sheet. So let's go ahead and get this mounted so we can get the gate in place. Now my gate is going to be opening out, so the hinge is going to be like this, so it can bend out like that. So, and I had this laying flat, we're going to put it up so you can see it better, but you want the, the hinge to line up with the top and bottom rails, that's roughly about where you want them. You want them as spread out as possible. So I'm going to center mine just slightly below the center going down on the top one, and just slightly above the center coming up on the bottom one. And then, like I said, it's going to be mounted on this side here so it'll be like this so i'm going to get these mounted onto the post first then we'll get them here onto the gate and then get everything connected and then you can also adjust these these move a little bit so we can then level it and get it just perfect and then the gate should be in place then we can put the latch and all that stuff on and then we'll install the last post we're going to get a measurement here so from the bottom of the gate up to where we want it so the gate is obviously five feet as far as the gate post. I don't want it right in the middle. That would put us at 56, 56 inches. We're going to go at about 55 right here. So from the bottom, 55. So on our post, our end post with the stiffener, we're going to come about 55 inches from the ground up. And that's where we're going to center our, our um, the uh, hinge on that post. And then on the bottom one, if we see down there, we're looking at roughly about five inches from the bottom. So we're going to do five and then 55. Now, if we look on the back of the hinge, you'll notice that this piece here is bigger than this one. And if you flip them over, this has a pattern going up and down because this one slides up and down. This one has a pattern going in and out because this one slides in and out. What you want is you want this smaller one mounted to the post and the larger one is mounted to the gate. We're going to start by drilling some pilot holes uh, through the post and then into the aluminum um, support that's inside. We have everything in place. I'm going to do the one on the bottom as well, and then we'll be back to attach this. Then we'll do the same thing on the gate side, and then we can start attaching it.
So everything's been connected. We put the, the hinge on there and just hand tightened in these um, acorn nuts just to hold it in place. Now, the cool thing is you can go up and down on this side. You can go in and out on this side so you can level it. So if we do this, because you can see it's not level, but I can adjust it accordingly. We'll, we'll put a level on it and then we'll tighten everything up. So I have right here, we have our socket. So we'll put the level on it. See what needs to be done. So right about here is level. I'm going to prop it up on the bottom to hold it in position, and then I'm going to tighten it up, and we'll be back to take a look at it. Put this on it. Right on point, so we can now start tightening up those acorn nuts, and the fence, or the gate, is done, and then we'll just put the hardware on it. Everything is tightened. Let's check it out. Opens nice. This is has a spring in there. I need to adjust the tension. We'll do that after we're done, but everything is good. So now I can put the last post in here, this last section. We'll put the latch and then the handle and the lock. I have the last hole dug. We drop this guy in here. One thing to keep in mind though, when this gate closes, because of the size of this gate, it'll latch right here. This is seven feet center to center, not eight. So the lower and upper rails are gonna have to be trimmed down. I'll show you how to do that. But then all that'll be done and we can put the latch on. This is the piece that we're gonna cut. We, we needed 87 inches in order for it to slide completely in. So we're gonna grab this, measure this out, 87 inches which is right here. And what I'm going to use to cut it, you can just use a, re a reciprocating saw and that'll just cut right through this nice and clean. So let's get this cut. This is the latch that I'm using here. It's a lock latch deluxe series, gate latch, privacy security. Comes with a little instruction sheet. But if we dump out all the contents, we can see what we're working with here. We have all of our pieces here. You've got the key and the lock as well, all these different parts. So let's go through the instruction sheet so we can see what is what, and then we'll get everything in place and start screwing it in. First thing you want to determine is if this is going to be a left or right mount. Obviously, right mount would be if you're putting it on, on the post here and the gate is closing this way. If that's the case, then this mounting plate would go this way. So it would then go on the post like this. If you're doing a left mount, then you would just flip it upside down. It's universal. And then it's going to be mounting on the left with the gate closing this way, which is what I'm doing. So that's how we're going to position this. You have your right here, which is known as the striker body. This mounts on the gate itself, so that way as you, as you bring it in, it's going to go right in like that. And then you would raise that, pull it out. This piece goes on the inside, so that's going to be mounted this way. Um, I just need to reverse this panel as well. That can be reversed as well. Right now it's set for the right. It needs to be reversed this way, but you'll have it on the inside, so when this closes, you'll have the rod that goes through it right here and that will connect here to the key so you can unlock and lock it but that's how simple this is so let's head over to the gate and the post so we can get them lined up where they need to go and start drilling the holes so we can put these on now one thing to keep in mind you'll see the little slotted sections for the screws you'll see a center line you want your screw to be right there at that center line in the center of the slot 
and that's on this side and also on this side you'll see the line better right there so our striker body we're going to position right about here so I'm going to line up the bottom of it with the bottom of this top rail I'll bring it right about here and then we'll put the screws in to lock that in place and then we'll have a placement where then we can put the, the latch assembly over here we go right on point I'll get a close-up so you can see the screws and you can see how they are centered right on those lines here's our plate we're gonna line that up we are gonna have to drill this out but first we're gonna get it centered so you can see how this goes together like this we'll mount this Let's bring our gate in to see where it's going to hit. It's going to hit right here. That's where we want it. Right like that. So now let's mount our plate and then we'll feed this through and put the, the, uh, the key lock on the other side and then be done with it. Next, we have our connecting rod. You want to make sure that it is the length of the width of the post. If it's any longer, you want to cut it down to match. But we're going to take it. We have this side here, the key side. It slides right into this hole. We're going to put it all the way in until it clicks like that. So now it's in there. So once this is connected, it'll go through here. And then you have the latch side where it goes in on this end. It'll be like that. Next, we need to get the right placement from the latch to the lock there on the inside. So we'll take our mounting plate. You can see I've already drilled out a pilot hole. So right in the middle of this template, there's a, a drill hole. So we've matched that up exact. So now you have these notches right here. We're gonna take this center notch. We're gonna make a straight line and get a measurement, match that line on this side, and then put the template on this side and drill that same pilot hole. That way we can line up this lower hole as we drill through so that way that that uh, rod will line up perfect so let's go ahead and mark that we made our pencil mark right in the middle of that notch so now we'll measure that and do the one on this side we are at 55 make sure we get it lined up properly 55 and 3 eighths. So that's what we're going to do on this side. It's 55 and 3 eighths. Here's our measurement. Just going to put a level right across those two lines to make sure. And we are right on point. So the next thing that I'm going to do, we're going to take our template now on this side, line it right up with that notch right in the middle, and then we'll drill out the pilot hole on this side like we did on the other side. There we go. So now we have our marking where we can line it up here. When we drill out this bottom hole on this side and on the other side, they'll line up nice and straight for that rod to connect through. Next, I'm going to be drilling out a half inch hole on each side where this lower, we put this on here. We line up our, <clears throat> our template hole right through there. Now, you want to do a pilot hole first, but I've already done that. So now we're moving up to the to the half inch to go through. We'll go ahead and check this. Line up our pilot hole right there and our half inch hole is right on point. I'm going to do the other one on the other side and then we'll be back to start putting things on. 
you can see going through this one's good let's check the other side here we are everything is lined up perfect now that we've drilled out the holes we're ready to connect this mounting bracket to the latch body so for this one here because we're putting it on this way We'll attach it like that. We have these small Phillips screws that we're going to screw in here to connect this all together. So I'm going to connect this and then we'll be back to attach it to the fence. To make things easier, I drilled all the pilot holes. So we have all the pilot holes here for this mount. One there, one there. And then on this side, we have the two here, that one, and that one. So now we can just bring the hardware together with the mounting screws and get it all put in. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this side here with the, the push button on it. Get that in place. We're going to push the button in until you see the rod come out. You can see as I push it, it comes out. So now we can line it up here. Make sure it slides in. So when these are mounted, you can see how the latch moves. We're gonna screw this side in, and then we'll be back to screw this one in now that we have them lined up. Everything is good. Let's try the lock. So currently we have it locked. So from both sides it's locked. We'll put the key in, unlock it. The push button will open it. Opens on this side. Let's come on this side and see if, if it works from this way. Put the key in, we're gonna lock it. This is locked, that's locked. Unlock it, that unlocks. Perfect. As you can see, the gate works really good. We have the spring hinges on here. You can watch this. Latches all by itself. We can lock it here from the inside or you just push the button. You can open it that way. We lock it everything is tightly sealed and, and and good that wraps up this video on installing this vinyl fence i hope that this was informative for you helped you out maybe if you're working on a fence project yourself as far as some of the things we covered with installing the hardware and just installing it and putting it together please send me any questions and comments i would love to hear from you and as always i appreciate all the support please like the video subscribe to the channel as i'm constantly posting new content with home improvement, do-it-yourself videos, automotive repair, all kinds of stuff. I'll see you next time.